With honor says the motto of the OTA here in Chennai. We are here at the Officers Training Academy in St. Thomas Mount and we are discussing whether the, really the, you know, the permanent commission that has been granted uh, by the Delhi High Court is going to be a welcome move or whether there are still challenges ahead. Now at training institutes like this, I'm going to ask each of you, uh, is there a sort of discrimination? When I'm saying discrimination, I mean, you know, for women cadets, is there a lesser amount of hours for training or is it an equal platform for everybody, irrespective of whether he's a male or female? Uh, Ma'am, I would say that we have same working hours, right from the morning till in the evening, we have same working hours. However rigorous the training is. However rigorous the training is, we, uh, we have all same, uh, like firing, drills, uh, PT, uh, everything is exactly same, our lecture hours, everything is entirely same. Mm -hmm. So I can say that there is no discrimination at all, everybody is putting their best and uh, Okay. This is how. So what then is this whole hue and cry about women not being able to serve in the army? Is it the biology of a woman itself that you know that they bring in and they say, okay, they will get tired too soon. They 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 rather be given soft positions and they take too much of frequent leave. Is it the whole biology that is to blame? I personally feel that the first thing that you taught in this academy, the day you entered the academy, is that there isn't any discrimination. Uh, I personally feel that uh, a man and a woman are only different by their biological processes and not my mind. Indira Gandhi was more of a man than a woman. Okay. I personally feel she mm -hmm. could take the decision. Any woman who has a decision making ability and the power to execute it is as good as a man. First of all. Mm -hmm. As second of all, I personally feel as far as training hours is concerned, we do the same kind of training. There isn't any discrimination. Whether it comes to uh, being harsh or being soft, the first thing about an officer is that you're supposed to be compassionate and passionate about what you do and and I personally feel that as I don't think I am uh, misfortunate by any way be, by being a woman it's a boon I'm able to give life and uh, for that matter if I'm taking a leave that is something that God's made me that way and I'm and the best part about this training is and the academy and the army is that it allows me to behave like an officer at the same time a lady a wife a mother. It helps me fulfill all my roles in every capacity, in mm -hmm. every domain. Okay. And that's the beauty of this organization, that it encourages you. Okay. Now you, you, you wanted to say something. You want to add to that? Yeah. See, as you tell that the biology of the woman makes something different. It's uh -huh. not the biology of the woman which makes it different. It's the way we are brought up. Mm -hmm. See, there is a difference in bringing the male child and the female child. See, when we are uh, like child, we were with mother more and we were brought up like a docile, innocent creatures. But when it ca comes to boys, they were they were many, spending their more of time outdoors. Yeah. And this is what the difference, this is not the biology of what it matters, is the, as the time proceeds, so we will be up to the mark of the man and we will challenge them. And yet we are challenging them so, and there is a myth that women can't compete with men, that will be co completely vanished mm -hmm. in future. Mm -hmm. So once again, I want to put forth that question whether, you know, if you were given a chance to, if once that combat forces option was cleared, would you actually go onto the field yeah, obviously. and fight? Yeah, obviously. That is what hand? everyone, it's a dream. It's a dream and it obviously it will come true one or the other day and that might will be vanished. Okay, I want to ask a gentleman, Kenneth, this. Do you think there's actually, uh, it's, it's not enough, it's not safe enough for the woman or is it as equal as you? When, you, when, when you're saying, okay, a woman maybe, you know, might be able to go to a combat force. Uh, is, wh there should be a reason why they've not allowed that till now. Okay, I'll just tell you uh, what's. It's a, there's a very big myth in uh, in, this, uh, in the eyes of civilians. Uh, what will happen with a woman if she'll be serving in a field area? Field area are the front areas. As I just want to explain is that whenever a woman or a man enters the academy, enters this academy, and when he gets the stars on his shoulders, then after that he becomes only an officer. There's no difference between men and women. At that time, he or she is only an officer. And he commands, he leads just like an officer. There is no difference uh, in the mind of Javans and but other you know, soldiers. You know, Vibhav, I want to ask you at this point also, uh, is this only just in theory or is it actually done in practice? Because if a woman officer was taken hostage by an enemy, there would have been a lot more hue and cry. There is a discrimination then, right? So it is probably because of a lot of reasons like that that they're saying that they shouldn't be allowed into combat forces. I think a lot of hue and cries, you are just uh, speaking uh, from the size of civilians. But here in the academy, we are trained for that. Mm -hmm. The men and women are all trained for the same. They've all been uh, told about how to, re uh, how to react, how to rescue yourself. They are, we are told a lot of techniques. It's not like that. Okay. If the training is same, then there is no problem in that. Okay. So okay. they also face the things similarly. Okay. You want to add to that? Yeah. 
As just Smita has said, I would like to elaborate on that. Nothing is built, uh, no castle can be built over the night. Mm -hmm. The difference comes in what is the social setup. Mm -hmm. It's We've been uh, fed, it's fed in our minds since the beginning that we're this submissive creature mm -hmm. who's got to be making a home, who's got to be taking care, got to be loving. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> On the contrary, anybody who's trained would become the way he or she's trained. For example, coming into the academy, we hardly get the feeling that there's any, I mean, femininity does exist. But the fact is that all of us are here for a professional uh, concept. Mm -hmm. There's just professional competence existing. Okay. And uh, when it comes down to being a, going for a war, mm -hmm. any soldier in uniform has one dream. Before mm -hmm. I retire, I wish to fight a war for my nation. So, so goes with a lady cadet too. There's no difference in any kind of a dream that we possess. Okay. And as far as uh, the hue and cry about being hostages is concerned, a few differences, I don't know, we are too young to comment on it. At the moment, we can just comment upon the part of the training. Mm -hmm. We're not made to think in any which ways. Just that when it comes down to being able and stand at the front and fight, we are all equally able. Mm -hmm. And uh, any individual who uh, follows the training sincerely, goes and exhibit it on the front, is good enough as a soldier. So mm -hmm. it really doesn't come down to the gender at all. Mm -hmm. Now very quickly, I want to ask uh, you maybe, you know, um, at the field itself, now, just, it's, it's going to be a very speculative question, okay? Um, okay, we'll probably wait for that flight to take off because we have another flight to um, Right. Uh, if on the field, all right, now, you, if you were in a unit and you were heading a unit, do you think there would be a difference in a Jawan taking orders from you as a woman officer than him taking an order, order from a male officer? Maybe he is coming from a village, for instance. He's coming from a village where women are, you know, behind that parda or the veil and are seen as submissive creatures. Do you like, think there would be a difference? Like I told you earlier, uh, an officer, attributes of an officer are compassion, passion at the same time, making your jawan at ease with your presence. If you're able to do that, you've, suc you've succeeded, you've won half the battle. Um, I personally feel that women have been entering the, uh, women have been there in the army for 17 odd years. And there's enough mental maturity in men. They have been seeing enough women around. They have been. They are actually being trained by a uh, lot of them. In fact, a lot of uh, our DSs over here are lady officers. And I don't feel there's any lack of respect, or in any of the male cadets or gentlemen cadets or female, uh, lady cadets. We all feel the same way about them. Okay. And I. It, it's just your word. It's just your command. Mm -hmm. If you're able to execute your the whatever you have in your mind, and you're able to make a man at ease with your presence. I think you're able to do whatever you want them to do. Okay, all right. On that note, we're going to go into the next segment. Uh, we're going to explore about how, you know, we, we know India is very centered about, uh, uh, around its family system. We're going to bring in aspects of family, marriage, and how it really affects the growth of a women officer, whether it really does. We're going to explore all of that on the other side of you special. Do stay with us.